had people download Anaconda. Uh, we use Jupyter Notebooks, um, and I'll show you how to get to that in just a second. But I'll, I'll leave this link in the description if you haven't done that already and you're just doing this project. Um, but you'll go, you'll download Anaconda, you know, download, super easy. Um, and you're gonna open up Jupyter Notebooks. I'll launch it right now, I already have it open. Uh, but I'll open up another one just for, you know, uh, the purposes of demonstration. What we are going to do today and what we, um, what people voted on, I mean, there's like, there's like 8,000 people that voted um, in the poll that I made of what data you wanted me to scrape. There was like Amazon, cryptocurrency, weather, um, something else, I don't remember. Overwhelmingly, I mean like 70% of people, maybe even 80%, I you know, don't, don't fact check me on that, voted for Amazon. Um, and so I'm gonna do it. Now, there are many things that you can scrape um, off of Amazon, just a ton of stuff. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to make it useful, how to make a data set. Um, and it's gonna be really interesting, but there are lots of other ways to do this. And so I think, um, and I have already kind of created it. I'm gonna show you how to do it off of this page um, when you're actually in an item and you can scrape, you know, basically anything in here. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. Another thing that is a little bit more advanced, and that's why this first video is starting off, I think, on the more easy side. It's not easy, but it's easier. The next thing, the next video that I'm gonna make is how to actually do, um, basically do multiple items, right? So this item, this item, this item, this item, and then traverse through the different pages. So there's 20 pages, um, you want all of that data, how do you get all of that? That'll be the next project. Um, I don't know when I plan on doing that. I have it like 90% of the way done, um, but I had this one completed. And so I wanted to get that out to you guys now, but that'll probably be the next project. I think that is much more difficult. Um, and so if you can understand this one and you get it and, and you understand it, then the next project you should be able to understand too is just a little bit more complicated. So with that being said, um, we are gonna actually get into the project. I'm gonna delete one of these. Um, all we're gonna do is go to new do Python three, it'll open up a new one. We'll call this um, Amazon Web Scraper um, Project. That's what we'll call it. <clears throat> Did I spell that right? Perfect. Um, the first thing that we need to do uh, or that we should do is upload um, or, or, or import our libraries. So I'm gonna say um, import, oops, what am I doing? off to a terrible start. There we go. Import libraries. Now, I'm not gonna write out all the libraries. Um, I have some things that I'm going to be copying and pasting throughout this. I won't, there's only a few things that I'm copying and pasting. You can take a quick glance. Um, some of the things that I just don't wanna waste time on, because um, this could be a long video, I don't know. I don't wanna waste time on stuff like this. Um, and so, you know, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. You guys are going to, I'm going, there will be a link below if you haven't clicked it already that will go to the GitHub page where you can literally have all of this code already written. I do recommend writing it all yourself because you will learn it much better, I promise, because then you'll make mistakes and you'll figure it out and all that, all that good stuff. But you will have that code available, so just go copy and paste it, um, that's what I would do. But what we are, we are gonna be using today is uh, something called Beautiful Soup requests. Um, then we're going to be using time and date time and a potential one if you wanna get, and I'm gonna show you this at the end, this is not really part of the project, it goes above and beyond. But this library right here is for sending emails to yourself um, and I'll show you how uh, you can use it if you want to. I already have the whole code written out. Um, you can just steal it and try it out yourself and see if you can get it to work. But this one is not um, as important. I'll put it down here. So. Um, let's move on. Now, one thing I want to say <clears throat> before we get too into it is that, well, give me a second, is that right here in front of me is a different laptop. Now, it took me a solid, I would say, you know, 10 hours or so to write all of this. It took over the course of like two weeks in my free time. I'd pick it up. It took me a solid, you know, two weeks on and off, an hour here, an hour there to finish this project. Um, and I made a ton of mistakes and messed a bunch of things up and I finally got it to work, um, you know, after a bunch of revisions. That's typically how things go when I do projects. And so uh, I'm about to give you a streamlined version of this because I have all the code 
right down here. And so I'm gonna be glancing at this a lot um, just so I don't make this video 20 hours of trying to remember all the code off the top of my head. I have it written out already. I already did the project. It works, it's beautiful, it's a good project. So um, I don't wanna waste your time and I just want you to know that, you know, you, you nobody should be able to do this off the top of their head in an hour. Most people won't. Um, it takes time, you make mistakes. Um, <clears throat> but uh, let's get started on the project. Now, in this, uh, in this, what we're gonna have to do is, we are going to have to tell Beautiful Soup and requests where we are actually getting this data from. What website, um, what is our computer, you know, some information from our computer. I'm gonna, again, I, there's gonna be a little copying and pasting in here because you don't ever, you will never, ever, ever need to know this. Um, but right here, we're going to <clears throat> basically connect to the website. So I'm just gonna say connect to website. And we're gonna say URL is equal to, <clears throat> and let's go get our URL. So we have this right here. So literally just go up here, do, you know, uh, control A, copy that, oops. That's the actual project, get rid of that. Uh, paste it in here, and that is our URL. We will use that in just a second. Uh, what am I doing? Let me just get some room here. And then we, what we're gonna need is something called headers. Now, again, you will never, ever, ever need to know this. So I'm just gonna say headers. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna show you how to get this really quick. Um, but is something called headers. So uh, let me show you how to use um, how to get this and why you don't need to know any of this. So what this headers is is this something called a user agent. You need to do this for your computer, um, and you can do that by going to this link right here. So I'm going to put this link in the description so that you can go and get that. And there's something right here called the user agent. So all you have to do is copy this, just like this, do copy. I'm gonna go back here and I'll show you that it's, I'm gonna copy it in, um, it'll be the exact same. So there you go, it's the exact same. Um, all of this extra stuff, except encoding, except um, this HTML stuff, connection, close, all that, you don't need to know any of it. I promise you'll never come in handy ever in life. Actually, there will be one person who that becomes in handy for and then they'll message me. Um, but we are now connecting um, using our computer, using this URL. And then what we wanna write is we wanna write page. And we're gonna say equals, and this is where we start using uh, these libraries. So we're gonna use requests.get and we are gonna pull in that URL. And we're just gonna say headers is equal to our headers right here. So uh, we have this, and this is where we're gonna actually start getting the data, bringing in the data. Um, and it's not gonna look like that at first, but I'll try to print some stuff out as we go along the way so that you can kind of see what it looks like and how we're gonna kind of make it more useful because it comes in very dirty uh, when we first get it. And some of the things I'm gonna show you will just help clean that up. Um, and before we actually go any, any further, I don't want my head to be here for the entire time. I'm gonna get rid of myself so you can just see the page. Uh, I just, it's it, less distracting. Uh, I hate when, I feel like people are always watching me, so I want people to just focus on the code. Uh, so I will see you in a little bit. Let's get back into it. All right, so what we are going to do is we are actually gonna start using the beautiful soup library. All right, so we are gonna say soup one is equal to, and this is where we actually start bringing in beautiful soup, and you guessed it, you're gonna say beautiful soup and then in parentheses we're going to do page.content um, and again these aren't really things that you need to remember or need to memorize we're just pulling in the content from the page that's really all we're doing right now and um, it comes in as html so we're going to do html.parser uh, and let's see if i can print out uh, actually let me just do soup one i don't like i don't like doing upper caps on stuff let's see if anything prints out real quick so we are literally pulling in all of the HTML. Um, and let me go show you really quick, because we're gonna get to this in a second anyways. Um, if you come here, this is this is a static page, 
basically written in HTML. Um, if you have never seen HTML before, um, you know, actually a lot of this is, you know, just stuff that most people will never use. Uh, it's just good to know. Some of the stuff is good to know. So as you see, I'm scrolling on this right side. By the way, I did right click and inspect or control shift I, which everyone works better for you. But as I'm scrolling over this, you should see it kind of highlighting different areas. Um, it's hard to kind of get what you want. Let's say we want this title. Um, what I can do is I can click select element, go right here, um, and then we can select like a type, the, the, the header or the title of the, the page. Now, I just wanted to show you though of what we're pulling in. So we're pulling in this doc type HTML, all of this is coming in. So that's what this is right here, this doc type HTML, and we're pulling every single thing in. That is what we're doing right now. Uh, so let's get, or let's go down a little bit. Let's do soup two. We're just gonna do a very, uh, you know, uh, an upgrade to soup one, basically. We'll do beautiful soup again. And then we're going to do uh, soup one. So we're pulling in that content again. So that's soup one. And we're gonna do dot prettify. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it is common in a lot of different languages and a lot of different stuff. Um, it just makes things look better. It, that's really all it is. Uh, I don't know why I'm using double quotes. Uh, I don't know why I can do, you can do single ones if you want. Um, and now let's do Beautiful Soup 2. And it should just be, a, it should be better formatted. Um, and let's see if that's true. And it is. So before, if you did, if you can tell it, was, it didn't have basically any formatting. It has a little bit of formatting now. Um, it'll help in a second. Um, and you'll see that. <clears throat> but now what we want to do is go back and we want to actually get the data that we want. Now you can get any data you want. I'm going to show you simple things. Really, really easy. Um, in, my, in, my, in, in my opinion, it gets more difficult the more complicated stuff you start pulling. Um, and, and you'll understand that as we go into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to select this, um, the title. I want that. And so if you do span ID, it's equal to product uh, title. So we need to remember that. Um, class, we don't need to know class, I believe. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be using that ID, this um, ID equals product title. So that's what we're going to be using. Um, class will come in in the next video when we start looking at these, uh, but not in this one. So let's remember ID equals product title. So let's go back over here. So we have this soup two. It's basically all of that HTML in it right down here. That, that is what we're pulling in. So we need to kind of specify what we actually want. So let's say title. That's what we're going to be getting. Um, and we're going to do soup two. So using taking all that content, um, and we're going to do find, and we're going to do a pr uh, open parentheses. And we're going to say we're, we want to find that ID where it's equal to product title, and then we're going to do dot get underscore text, and then we're going to do open parentheses. So now let's um, <clears throat> let's print the title. And see what we get. All right, so that is exactly what we're looking for. It's funny got data mis um, t-shirt. That that is what we're trying to pull in. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. We don't. Uh, let me let me just do this. Save me some time later on. We don't only want the title. We are also going to be pulling in the price. <clears throat> so if you can guess, uh, we'll be doing some uh, a data set on the actual pricing. Um, and so let's go back here. We're going to again use this right here and we're going to go to this price. And it says, again, we're going to look at this ID. The ID equals price block underscore our price. So fairly easy. You can copy this. I'm just going to write it out. Um, we're going to say price is equal to soup two dot find. And then it's going to be again, ID is equal to, and then it's going to be price block underscore our price. Did I sell that right? Oops. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. And the exact same thing dot get underscore text parentheses. Uh, and there's a get text, there's a get all. 
or, or get all text. Um, so you know that get text is a specific thing that we are using. You know, we might use a different one later on, um, but that that is what we have. So now let's let's print the title and print. Why do I, why do I have all this? Too much uh, too much space. So let's print the title and print the price. Now let's see what we get. <clears throat> okay, so we have our title and we have our price. I mean, you know, I don't know what all this white space is over here, um, but it looks like there's a lot of white space over here. We'll have to get rid of that uh, in a little bit as we clean it up a little bit. You can, if you want, do things like um, you can get, and this is up to you. I'm not going to do this right now, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. You can get this where you're pulling in the ratings, um, which is, you know, uh, if you want to look at like how the ratings over time or or what ratings are for specific products, that can be really useful. Um, you can pull basically anything. You can go down to the product details and look at dimensions. Uh, anything you want on this page, it is static. So you can go in here and pull anything. It's, it just, just have to pull it from the HTML, know where you're looking, pull it in. Um, and now when we go back here, excuse me, I'm going to show you now kind of how to use this, right? Because we have this, but how are we going to use it? Um, that's kind of the important part, I think. First thing we need to do is clean this up a little bit because it, it just is, you know, if we try to use this, it wouldn't be super useful because it'd be it's just a little bit dirty. It's not super clean. Um, so what we want to do is let's start with the price. Why not? Uh, we're going to say price dot strip. Um, and that's just going to take uh, basically the the junk off of either side. And so let's run that real quick. So this is what we have. But what we can also do is I don't want that dollar sign. I just want the numeric value. Um, later on, we are going to be putting this and we are going to be um, creating a process to put this into an Excel file. Again, we're trying to create a data set. I don't want you to have to copy and paste stuff. It's all going to be automated basically to input this data into an Excel file for you or a CSV file for you. So, um, you know, think about making it useful in a CSV or in an Excel later on. So what we can do is do a bracket and we're gonna do one and then everything af after that. So basically it's just gonna take everything from the first position onward. Uh, so let's run that and there we go. So let's just say price is equal to price.strip um, and pull, uh, just do everything after that first, um, that first, not value, what am I saying? What's the word for that? I can't remember the word, the first space. That's not the right word, but all right, let's do the title. Um, this is basically gonna be the exact same thing. Um, super easy, so we're just gonna do title.strip and open parentheses. Um, and we can, you know, if you want to do this exact same thing, so now we have it, it's a little bit cleaner. So this is what it originally looked like, and now this is what it looks like. So, you know, nothing super crazy, but, you know, something interesting to know. Now, we are about to, in the very next part, what we are going to do, and let me just add a few of these because it makes me feel better. Um, what we are about to do is we're going to create our CSV to insert this data into the CSV, and then later on, what I'm going to do is show you kind of how to um, automate this process to, to pull this data um, uh, to create a data set, right? Just pulling this one time and putting it into a CSV really doesn't do anything. You can just copy and paste that and save yourself a lot of time. Um, what I'm going to show you is, is um, basically doing it over, over time and just having it automated in the background. That is what I'm going to show you, um, I guess a spoiler. But what we need to do is we need to create uh, create the CSV, insert it into the CSV, and then create a process to append more data into that CSV. Um, I'm doing a lot of talking, let's do some writing. So what we need to do is we're gonna use, um, I should have done this at the top, maybe I'll go back and add that later on. We're gonna do import CSV. Now, in a CSV, what you want is you want headers, and then you want the data, right? So for our headers, and we're gonna call it header, we're gonna do um, we're gonna do a bracket and let's make the first one a title because that's gonna be uh, we can call it title you can call it 
product, um, whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it, because I've been using title, I'm gonna call it title. Um, and then we'll also have price. Now we need our data. So I'm gonna say data is equal to, now this is important. Um, <clears throat> right now, how our data is, and I can do this right here, we're gonna do type um, title, or no, let's do type price. So well, these are strings, and that's important to know. Um, again, I don't wanna get too much into you know dictionaries and arrays and lists and, and strings and all these things, but this is a string, and you can't put that, right now it's not super usable. What we're going to do is make this a list. Um, and so I'm doing an open bracket, and I'm gonna say our data is title, comma, price, oops, price. Now, oops, if I do type, oops, of data, I'll just run that, it's a list now. Um, and this is important because you can run into a lot of issues with this stuff. It's really important to remember what's, what type, um, how do I say this, uh, how your data is, is it a list, is it an array, is it a dictionary? Um, you know, what is it? These things are important, they do play a big impact, especially with this type of stuff. So just wanna show you that really quick. But what we are now gonna do is create a CSV. Um, you're gonna create an Excel. I, I call it an Excel CSV, you know, whatever you wanna call it. So what we are going to do is we are gonna say with, and we're gonna say open, and now we're gonna name our file. You can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna call it, uh, um, Amazon Web Scraper Dataset. That's a real long uh, .csv. And then we're gonna do underscore W, and that means write. Um, oh, whoops, that's not right. Just like, I was wondering why that was uh, in black. Uh, so we're gonna do W, which means write. Um, and then we're gonna do new line. If you don't know what new line is, uh, all that does is when we insert the data, it doesn't have a, sp a space in between each CSV. And then we are going to do encoding is equal to, oops, is equal to UTF-8. And that is it. And we'll just say as, uh, let's do F. So, <clears throat> Some of that stuff you don't need to know. Some of it's useful. This W you definitely need to know. This new line is is good to know, and um, I'll take it. I might take it out just to show you what it actually does because it's annoying if you don't have it. I promise. Um, but you know that that new line is important. This encoding, you know, good to know. I think that's by default. Is is it's like that. Uh, anyways, what we're going to do now is we're gonna. Uh, it's something within the CSV, within the CSV um, library. So we're gonna do something called CSV writer and oops, CSV dot writer. And we're gonna do open parentheses and that is that. And we'll just call that writer. And then we'll do, <clears throat> this is where we need to actually create the header. So uh, we're gonna do writer is dot, or sorry, writer dot write row uh, and this is just for the initial um, the initial import or, or, or um, not import, the initial insertion of the data into the CSV. This is what's important. The next one that we're gonna write is for when we're actually appending the data, which is gonna be a little bit different. But anyways, <clears throat> we're gonna do write row, open parentheses, and this is where that header is gonna go. So we're gonna, the, the, these headers are gonna be the title and the price. And then for our last one, we're gonna actually write the data, which is this data right here. And we're gonna say writer dot write row, and we're gonna do data. So this one, we are creating the CSV, and then we are inserting the header and inserting the data. So super easy. Um, yeah, I think that's fairly straightforward, right? Now let's do this and Let's see what happens. So I just ran it. Um, let's go over here in here somewhere. Amazon Web Scraper dataset. Let's open that up. And there we go. Oh, geez. This isn't good. Can't verify my um, 
my subscription. Uh, why does it say $6.99? Uh, I'm going to go back and look, but I think I know the issue. Um, but this is exactly what we want. Now, of course, we want more data and maybe a little bit more useful data. Um, and I'll show you how to get that in just a second. But we just created that out of thin air. Uh, that was not, I didn't have that saved before. So we have this data set. And the issue was, is that I ran this multiple times. So now it's $6.99. If I do it again, it's $99. Uh, and if I did it again, it's it gets rid of everything. So I'm just going to run this again, run this again. Uh, now everything's back to normal. Okay. So now if we run this, it's going to overwrite this Amazon Web Scraper dataset.csv and it will put the data in properly. So there we go. Oh, geez. Guys, this is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. No, I don't want this. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, guys, I if you can't tell, I'm in need of some. Um, I'm in need of. I'm in need of some help here. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm do, I'm doing fine. Uh, I just I don't know why that. Uh, <laughs> why I don't have my uh, subscription activated. It's not going to matter for this video, I guess. But that's really random. Um, so we got what we need. That's perfect. Now, what we want to do after this, um, I, I guess actually what is important is some more useful data. Something that I like to do a lot when I do this type of this type of stuff is I like to have some type of date stamp um, or some type of time stamp to know when I collected this data. It usually comes in handy later on. Um, I, I have never regretted putting it in there. I'll show you really quick how you can do it. Uh, you can do import date time. Jeez, I hate having to format stuff like that. And what you can do is you can do date, oh, let me get date, time, and you do dot date, dot today, open parentheses. And that is going to give us this right here. Uh, and so we're just gonna do um, today, that's what we'll call it, is equal to this. And we'll say print today. And there we go. So that is today's date is the 21st of August in 2021. So today is now um, is now this. So actually, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put it back up here. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to run it again. Let's add this right here. We'll do um, we'll do we'll call it date. And then we'll add today. And we'll just run this again. And what we can do just to check the data without having to open up the data every single time, which is super annoying, is we're going to use pandas. Again, I should have imported this at the top. I'm just kind of, uh, I'm not doing this off the top of my head, but uh, I didn't have it 100% planned. So import pandas, and we're just going to say pd.read underscore CSV, and then we'll read it in. Um, what you can do, or what I often do, is I go to properties. And I go right here, do, 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 and we'll say boom, boom, backslash, this right here. This I am doing off the top of my head. I don't do this often. I think I have this memorized by now. Uh, I, I, I hope. And then we'll do print. Oh, no, we don't have to do print. We'll just do this. Uh, what do I do? R, uh, let's all actually call this um, data frame. And we'll do print. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, so what we have now is the new, our new header, our new data that we added in there. So we have our title, we have our price, and we have our date. Now, again, you can customize this. Whatever you want to add, go back here. Um, you know, find what you want. You know, do you want it? to make sure that it has a men's option or different colors, or you want to pull in this information, whatever you want. It, it really does not matter. Um, just matters that, you know, you get what you need for whatever purpose, whatever you're making this for. This is more of an introductory video to how to scrape data from Amazon. Um, the next video will probably be a little bit more difficult and in depth, but this is kind of, let's get you guys started. So um, we now have this and this is beautiful. Now, something that you want to do 
when you're scraping data and you're getting, um, I guess, data over time. And that's kind of what we're doing. We're, it's going to be almost like um, a price tracker over time is you want to then append data to this. So we can't only create it. And that's what this does. Because if I run this 100 times, it'll only give me this first row. We need to now append data to this. So um, let's let's pull this down here. Uh, again, I'm I'm not I haven't added a bunch of notes. I'm gonna say now we are appending data to the CSV. I haven't added a ton of notes. I'll try to go back maybe afterwards and add some notes for people who like to read notes. <clears throat> um, so what we are now going to do is we're gonna change this W to an A plus. Now this is gonna be how we append the data. Um, and we no longer need the header, so we don't aren't going to do the header anymore. And there we go. So now instead of, excuse me, so now instead of creating that header again, creating that first row of data again, we are ignoring the data and we're now going to the next nearest free row and appending data, which means to add on data to that. Um, and so if I run this, which I'm not going to right now, oh, I mean, why not? I can, I can run it um, and then we can read this in. And so now there, there's our data. I'll run it a few more times. I, I ran it like three or four more times. I, I run that in and there we go. Now it's all the exact same data, super um, boring, but very, very, uh, you know, good to have. Now we don't want to have to come in here and run this every day. Let's say we're going to do this daily. Um, we don't want to have to come and write, run this every single day, right? We want a way where it does it while we sleep. It does it in the background of our laptop um, and is easy to do, right? I don't wanna come in here every single morning with a, set an alarm on my phone every single morning come in here. I want to automate this. <clears throat> so uh, how are we going to do that? Give me one second. Uh, if you didn't know, I have three kids and one of them is waking up. I'll be right back. All right, I think he is asleep. Um, at least let's hope he's asleep. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this all into uh, this check underscore price. <clears throat> now, you may never have used, oh, geez, what are these things called? Oh, my gosh. Super used all the time. You'll know what I what it is. Uh, not a function. I don't even remember what it's called. Maybe there's a function. Um, I can't think, I'm having like a writer's block or whatever that is. We're gonna put it all in here and then we're gonna be able to use this price check later um, because we want to be able to automate this. So let's go back all the way up here. We are going to use this. So let's copy all of that in. And, oh geez, I hate this. All right, everything just like that. Um, so this pulls in our data, pulls in, uh, or, or yeah, pulls in all of our data down to the title and the price. We want to make it look right. So we're going to put it right here. So now we have it formatted properly. Um, we want to add our date time. just like that. I don't know if there's a better, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Um, then we need this right here. And just like that, like that. So now we have our header and our data. And then we want to pull this in right here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. <clears throat> So everything that we just wrote out, we are now putting into this check price. Now you can call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. But let's run that, see if we get any errors, we don't. So this is now good to go basically. Um, what we are going to use this for um, and what this is going to do is we are going to put this on a timer. Um, you know, have you ever wanted to like check something once a day, once every 10 seconds, once a minute, whatever you want, and you don't want to have to actually pull up your phone and look at it, 
this is how we are going to do that. So we had something called, uh, let's see, time, this, this library time right here. That's what we're going to use right now. So we're going to say while, oops, while true and go like this, do a colon. We're going to say check underscore price. That's what we just wrote out. And we're going to do time dot sleep. Now, this is completely up to you how much time you want to put in here. For the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to put five seconds, which means every five seconds, it is going to run through this entire process. And so let's run this really quick. And I'm going to run it for, let's say, 30 seconds. And then I'm going to pull this in right here. So we just looked at it earlier. We had four, um, no, five rows of data, right? What we are going to do is in just a second, I'm going to stop this, you know, maybe after 30 seconds or so, and we're going to see how much data is in there. Uh, and let's stop it right now. It's been going far enough. Um, and now let's run it. So now we have five, six, seven, eight. So I guess I ran it for 20 seconds. We can... That was for demonstration purposes. I've never do every, any, some, anything ever, every five seconds um, unless it was like Black Friday <clears throat> on Amazon. We can put this as long or as short as you want. You can run it every second if you want. Um, that doesn't make sense to me, but you can. What we can do is do a little bit of math. Uh, and I don't know this off the top of my head, so I'm going to uh, do the math with you live. Pretty exciting stuff. Got the calculator out. So there are 60 seconds in a minute. And this goes by seconds, by the way. And you could do, you know, you can do some, um, some string up here of calculating this. But I'm just going to put in the number because it's easier. Uh, maybe not easier. I'm just going to do it. <clears throat> There's 60 seconds um, in a minute. There are 60 seconds or 60 minutes in an hour. So that's one hour. Uh, and we can do 24 hours in a day. So that, that's 86,400. I believe. Did I read that right? Oops. Did I read that right? Yes. So this now, if I ran this, and I'm going to, this is going to check the price every single day. And this is the entire point of this um, uh, of, the, of this project, not the entire point, but this is a big part of this project is we want to create our own data set. Now, something that I personally really love is a data set that has, you know, that I can do some type of time series with. Now, this is not exciting. It's probably not super exciting for this, right? But you get the idea that if this price were to change, we would then see that reflected in the data at some point. You can do this on any item you could ever imagine on Amazon. It's the exact same process. And some items change often. This t-shirt will most likely never change. Um, and so, you know, again, this is for demonstration purposes. The code itself will be nice to put in a project, although the data set that you get from this probably won't be the best, I would imagine. But notice that this is running. Um, I can then minimize this, and this can run on my computer basically as long as my computer uh, is, is working. Um, one thing I will say before I go on to some more stuff, one thing that I will say is that I personally, when I did this for a, when I um, created this, I did something similar, and I put this in Visual Studio Code, um, and I didn't put it in... Jupyter Notebooks. That's a personal preference. I would look into that if that is something that you want. Um, I think Visual Studio Code is a little bit easier for automating these types of tasks. Um, but for illustrative purposes and for demonstration purposes, you cannot beat Jupyter Notebooks. That's why I did it. So with all that being said, that is basically the end of the project. Now, um, I'm not going to stop this and read it again, but you get the point. Um, we now have um, a data set that, oh geez, all this again, that now has um, data. I'm getting out of here. Oh geez, it's hounding me. Let me get out of here. Oh no. All right, this is embarrassing, guys. I'm embarrassed.
<clears throat> we now have a CSV file with data in it. Now, you run this in the background of your computer. You can do that. I have done it. I've ran it for weeks. I have ran it for months. Um, if you restart your computer, just come back in here and restart running this process. Um, it's the same for any automated process unless you start using some online um, automation service, which will run it regardless of your computer. They do it, you know, in, either in the cloud or on, or on some um, server. So, you know, that this is a really good option. Again, if, if you restart your computer or something happens, you lose connection, just come in here, run this through the script again, um, except for the one where it deletes all your data. Don't run that one again. Only run that one time. Um, and then you will, and in fact, what I would do is then, um, I would just comment this out, right? I'd come in here and I would just comment this out so that anytime I come back in here, I would never accidentally delete all my data. But that is what this project does. Now, something really interesting, something that I have done in the past that I thought was really cool, really useful. I actually did it for, um, <laughs> I actually did it for some watches that I was watching, especially on Black Friday, it's when I used it. I was interested in a price drop or a specific price change. And what I did was, as I said, and I don't know. So what I basically did was, is I said, if the price is lower than, let's say, let's say we wanted to drop below $14, it would then send an email. Um, and I'm going to show you the script that I used. It still works. Um, and if this is something that you are interested in, this could be a completely different project. I just think it's interesting and I wanted to show it to you. Although I wouldn't say this, this is part of the um, final project. Let me just come in here and we're going to create this. Super simple, um, well, not super simple. We're sending a mail, we're connecting to a server. We were using Gmail, we're logging into our account. That is my email, you will not get my password. We're creating the subject, the body. Um, we, we configure or, or just kind of create this message. And then we send a mail. So then I have this define uh, or this send mail. I, I am blanking on what this is called. I'm gonna call it a function, but that's probably not right. So if that price drops below a certain point, it'll send me an email. Um, I have used this and I used it and was able to buy a watch that was like, you know, let's say 140 bucks for like 90 bucks um, on a Black Friday sale. And I was really, really happy about that. So this can be used in that way as well. Um, not something you have to write into your project, just something I'm going to include down here. If you want to try it, I think it's super interesting, something really fun, um, really fun to mess around with. I enjoyed this. So with that being said, uh, this is this is the project. Um, I in the next one, and I promise you, this one is probably going to get a lot more difficult. If you thought this one was easy, which I hope, maybe I hope you do, then that means you're you know pretty good at Python. You know, in the next the next um, web scraping project, and I hope to do many of these. I might do um, even all the ones that I put in that poll, but I started with the one that was the most popular. Um, you know, if you were able to get through this, I think that that is fantastic. I think this is a solid project to create um, a data set. And so use this how you will. You can copy my code exactly. I don't have a problem with that. Again, I don't think this is beginner. There are some a little bit more um, advanced things. And I don't, I'm not even advanced, just like intermediate level things um, that you kind of learn as you get into it. And so um, I hope that this was instructional. I hope that I explained it you know, well, um, and I hope that this is useful. Again, you know, when you actually use this, you'll have 22, 23, 24, 25, you know, you'll see a price change, a price change, a price change, a price change. Go use a product or go to something that you were interested in or you think you know fluctuates often. Um, and there are plenty of those on Amazon, I promise you. There's some that literally change almost every other day, like down a dollar, up a dollar. Um, and then Black Friday just goes crazy um, with these price changes. So use this as you will. I hope that this was instructional. I hope that it, it's useful. 
Um, I think I said that before. Is you know I, I'm doing this because I think it's really interesting. It's really useful. Um, this to me again was a good introduction, a really good introduction to web scraping because in this next one it gets quite a bit more difficult. Um, I would say on a scale of like difficulty, this is like maybe a four, and it'll probably jump up to like a seven on this next one. Um, just just much more. Um, technical or, or coding heavy. So, um, you know, look forward to that if that's something that you look forward to. With that being said, I'm gonna go back over here for my send off. With that being said, I hope this was helpful. I hope that you learned something. Um, don't get mad at me if it was too easy. Don't get mad at me if it was too hard. Uh, I'm doing my best over here. So I appreciate your patience. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I will see you in the next video.